In December 1986, American media company MCA Incorporated announced plans to build a 414-acre studio and entertainment complex in Orlando, Florida, in an attempt to capitalize on the influx of tourists visiting Walt Disney World. The most ambitious project ever undertaken by the company at the time was met with many roadblocks, struggles, and one of the most disastrous grand openings ever. However, through perseverance and determination, the only place where you can ride the movies became the world's premier movie and television-based theme park. For 30 years, guests have gone behind the scenes, beyond the screen, and right into the action, becoming the star of some of the most popular films ever made. This is theme park destination, Universal Studios, Florida. The story of the only park where everything that happens in the movies happens to you begins over a hundred years ago in Universal City, California. On March 14th, 1915, filmmaker Carl Lemley opened Universal City Studios to the public, offering tours of the 230-acre major production facility for just 25 cents. Visitors could visit the studio and witness the production of upcoming Universal Pictures films. The original Universal studio tour provided decent sized income for the movie studio until it began adding sound to their movies, which forced Lemley to close the studio to the not very quiet public, as the sound stages weren't properly soundproofed for filming. Tours of the back lot would return in 1956 with them outsourced to the Grey Line Bus Company. However, after a feasible study conducted by Buzz Price, the same man who helped determine the locations for Disneyland and Walt Disney World, Universal decided to take back control of the tour and developed the back lot into a full-blown tourist attraction. On July 15, 1964, Universal Studios Hollywood officially opened to the public. For $2.50, visitors rode pink and white striped glamour trams around the studio's back lot, which stops to see a collection of costumes designed by Edith Head, a makeup demonstration, a walk through a star's dressing room, a western stunt show, and were able to buy lunch at the studio commissary. Other attractions were shortly built afterward, including a $5 million visitor's entertainment center and additional set pieces for the tour, adding a flash flood section and a torpedo attack sequence. Throughout the 1970s, Universal spent millions to constantly update the tour, including the addition of a rock slide display, collapsing bridge, ice tunnel, and the biggest attraction in 1976, the Jaws Experience, in which the 25-foot-long shark from the movie attacks guests. While not as popular as Disneyland, Universal Studios Hollywood had established itself as a must-visit attraction for both visitors and locals alike. Even though Universal was making a name for itself in Los Angeles, its parent company MCA had plans for an aggressive expansion elsewhere, specifically in the Sunshine State. Wanting to capitalize on the rush of tourists and locals flocking to Walt Disney World, Jay Stein, the chairman of the board for MCA's Recreation Service Group, proposed building a brand new working production studio in Florida, dubbing it Hollywood East. Building this production studio would be a major challenge, as not only was the film industry almost non-existent in Florida at the time, but a new studio would have to be funded and built from scratch. In July 1981, MCA put together a two-hour presentation shown to other entertainment companies, including RCA, Paramount Pictures, and the billionaire Bass Brothers, looking to secure a financial partner to invest in the Florida project. Loaded with blueprints, concept art, and financial projections, Universal planned to create a studio tour similar to the one in Hollywood, but feature exclusive set pieces, including an enormous King Kong figure, designed by Academy Award-winning art director Henry Bumstead, attacking the tram as it passed over a bridge in New York City, and Hollywood Canyon, which had the tram on a bridge when a massive earthquake hits, causing a dam to crack and flood the Canyon, with the finale featuring a semi-truck exploding after crashing into an oil tank. Confident that someone would come on board as a partner to help build the studio, MCA had already purchased 423 acres of land in central Florida before making their pitch. Even with the land purchased and a well-laid-out plan in place, MCA didn't get the Hollywood ending they were expecting, as none of the potential business partners were willing to come on board. With no one on board to split the bill for the studio, MCA was 
forced to indefinitely postpone any plans in Florida. While Universal wouldn't be able to create Hollywood East, another company would take advantage of their misfortune. In February 1985, at his very first shareholder meeting, newly appointed CEO of the Walt Disney Company, Michael Eisner, announced plans to build a brand new theme park, one that would be a blend of iconic movie moments and behind-the-scenes magic that included a backlot tour and working movie studio, Disney MGM Studios. Once the news about the new park broke, MCA immediately accused Disney of stealing their concept and ideas for a movie-inspired theme park, specifically blaming Eisner, as he was in attendance at the presentation back in 1981 when he was still the president of Paramount Pictures. With Disney beginning construction on the park and no financial backing set in place, MCA had no choice but to wait and see what Disney was building before they were able to. That is until a certain ape helped change the company's fortunes. On June 14th, 1986, the King Kong encounter would officially open as part of the studio tour at Universal Studios Hollywood. Designed by legendary Disney Imagineer Bob Gurr, the 30-foot tall animatronic was a massive hit, solidifying the park as a must-visit destination and sending shockwaves throughout the theme park industry. Just a few weeks before opening, another former Imagineer, Peter Alexander, was putting the finishing touches on the animatronic when he ran into his former college roommate, Steven Spielberg, who just happened to be roaming the back lot. After seeing a live demo of the eighth wonder of the world, Spielberg asked Alexander to work on design ideas for an attraction inspired by a movie he had just worked on, Back to the Future. With an increase in attendance at the park and the glowing review from Spielberg about the King Kong encounter, Sid Sheinberg, the CEO of MCA, decided to revive the Florida Project. On December 9th, 1986, MCA, joined by the Cineplex Odeon Corporation, announced a joint venture to open a studio and entertainment complex to be officially known as Universal Studios Florida, with construction set to begin in 1987 and a planned opening date of 1989. Instead of proceeding along with their original plans, MCA quickly decided that the only way to compete head-to-head -head with Disney was to beat them at their own game, meaning a fully-fledged theme park with better rides and shows than anything the competition had to offer. The only problem was that Universal Management had no idea where to begin, as they had never built anything of this magnitude before. MCA approached Spielberg, who already had a working relationship with Universal Pictures and was responsible for some of the movie studio's most successful and highest-grossing films of all time, including Jaws, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and Back to the Future, about helping develop attractions based on those films. Spielberg would sign on as a creative consultant for the park in March 1987, helping develop the park's core concepts, including the idea of visitors writing the movies in their favorite scenes from their favorite films. As part of the agreement, Spielberg isn't allowed to work as a director for any rival theme park and in exchange receives 2% of all park ticket revenue, along with a portion of park concession receipts generated by Universal theme parks in Florida, Japan, and Singapore, valued at up to 30 to $50 million a year. While Universal Studios Florida pivoted from a working production studio with a studio tour to a full-fledged theme park, MCA was still committed to producing television shows and movies, building four sound stages on the site, one being 22,000 square feet while the other three would be 16,000. Construction on the theme park would begin in October 1987, with the sound stages due to open in the fall of 1988. The biggest acquisition for its production facility was the children's cable network Nickelodeon, who set up their studio at the park, occupying two sound stages and making Florida its primary center for producing numerous shows. For the actual attractions within the park, the main set pieces from the Hollywood tour, such as Jaws and King Kong, would be fleshed out to become their own separate, standalone attractions. Peter Alexander, now assigned to work on the park, would be involved in the creation of numerous rides, including Confrontation, The E.T. Adventure, Back to the Future The Ride, The Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera, and Earthquake, The Big One. To make each attraction stand out, Alexander wanted to create unique custom ride systems. That way, no 
two rides in the park would feel like the same experience. Because of the high price tag and a lack of experience designing and building these cutting-edge attractions, the opening date of the park was pushed back by one year. To keep the buzz going, four huge billboards were erected along Interstate 4 in July 1989, one featuring a three-dimensional E.T., complete with glowing fingers and moving eyes. Besides the billboards, MCA released a video detailing the park, starring Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown interacting with the various attractions. After nine long years and $650 million, Universal Studios Florida officially opened on June 7, 1990. In attendance were Spielberg and more than 50 well-known celebrities, including Sylvester Stallone, Michael J. Fox, James Stewart, Charlton Heston, Angela Lansbury, and Roy Scheider. Spielberg joined Jay Stein in the dedication of the park, cutting a ribbon made to look like a film strip that featured the attractions within the park. From its opening day, the park was able to accommodate up to 40,000 guests, with space for 7,000 cars in its parking lot. The price for an adult ticket to the park was $30.74, including tax, and parking only cost $3 per car. Located within the Universal Orlando Resort in Orlando, Florida, Universal Studios Florida is inspired by the entertainment industry, specifically movies and television. On its opening day, the park featured six areas, each with its own unique theme. While there isn't much to do within the front lot, it does feature the park's most iconic photo opportunity, the Universal Globe. Once they pass through the front lot, guests enter the first actual area of the park known as Production Central, which is made to look like a working movie studio filled with tons of giant sound stages. Production Central features six attractions. The television taping studio and family attraction Nickelodeon Studios, a behind-the-scenes tour of how Nickelodeon shows are made. The motion simulator attraction The Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera, which has guests join Yogi Bear, The Flintstones, Scooby-Doo and the Jetsons in the ultimate animated adventure, the part 3D, part live show, Alfred Hitchcock, The Art of Making Movies, which celebrates the filmmaker's 43-year association with Universal Pictures, the collection of movie props from Universal Pictures and other movie studios too big to fit in storage known as the Boneyard, the production studio tour, inspired by the tour at Universal Studios Hollywood, taking guests on a 15-minute tour around the studio studio and production facilities of the park, and the interactive live show Murder, She Wrote Mystery Theater, a 25-minute experience where guests are the executive producers on a new episode of Murder, She Wrote, and are involved in the production of a variety of effects including makeup, sound, and visual effects before seeing the final product. Heading straight is the New York section of the park, taking guests back to the classic New York of the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Unlike production Central. The sound stages in this area are hidden by facades, including recreations of the R.H. Macy's Department Store, Fifth Avenue, and the New York City Public Library. New York features two attractions. The special effects show Ghostbusters Spooktacular, a 20-minute stage show inspired by the 1984 sci-fi comedy film of the same name, in which Venkman, Ray, Egon, and Winston battle paranormal forces, and the crown jewel of the park, the Dark Ride Con confrontation, an expanded fleshed out version of the King Kong encounter from the Hollywood studio tour. Inspired by the 1976 film, guests find themselves trapped in a cable car and come face to face with the 40 foot tall ape as he stalks them through the streets of New York City. Heading right is San Francisco and Amity, two areas that are surrounded by waterfront views and feature recreations of classic landmarks from the city by the bay and the coast of New England. The area features four attractions. The special effects attraction Earthquake, the big one, inspired by the 1974 film of the same name that offers a unique blend of both education and entertainment, placing guests in the middle of an earth-shattering 8.3 earthquake on the Richter scale. The live stage show in American Tale Theater, inspired by Don Bluth's 1986 animated film An American Tale and its 1991 sequel An American Tale Fievel Goes West, which is an abridged version of both films. The stunt show Dynamite Night Stunt Spectacular, which takes place in the lagoon of the park and is themed around Miami Vice, 
featuring a variety of pyrotechnics mixed with explosions and live actors on jet skis, and the park's most infamous opening day attraction, Jaws the Ride, a boat attraction inspired by the 1975 film which places guests in the water with three tons of Great White Fury. Making our way to the other side of the lagoon is the Expo Center, designed to look like the set of a World's Fair. The Expo Center features two attractions, the live stage show Animal Actor Stage, featuring Universal's animal actors performing amazing stunts and tricks, and the dark ride The E.T. Adventure, inspired by Steven Spielberg's 1982 film, which has guests hop on their own bike to help E.T. escape from government officials and bring him home to the Green Planet. Besides the two attractions, the area also features a life-sized replica of Norman Bates's Psycho House, and the world-famous Hard Rock Cafe, which opened two months before the park did in April. Last but not least is Hollywood, which places guests right into the heart of the entertainment capital of the world, featuring historic landmarks including Schwab's Drugstore and Mel's Drive-In. Hollywood only has one attraction, the live show The Gory, Gruesome, and Grotesque Horror Makeup Show, which reveals to guests the methods Hollywood uses to create the most mangled, misshapen monsters in movie history. While met with excitement and anticipation from visitors wanting to ride the movies on opening day, things behind the scenes were the complete opposite, as you Universal was scrambling to get the park's big three attractions, Confrontation, Earthquake, and Jaws, up and running. All three suffered from downtime due to technical malfunctions and software glitches, forcing Universal to either refund or offer free tickets to more than 1,000 guests. These problems would persist throughout the summer, with Kong and Earthquake closed until mid-August, while Jaws the Ride was operating on and off whenever it wasn't running into its own problems. That is until Universal was forced to close the attraction on August 22nd to undergo a major overhaul. The problems with these attractions led to poor word of mouth and reviews, painting the underperforming park with a frayed reputation and missing the projected 6 million visitor target MCA had hoped for in the park's first year, quickly becoming a box office bomb. Universal turned to a crazy, white-haired scientist and his stylish time-traveling DeLorean to save the park. Into the car! Activate time circuits! We're going back! To the future! To the ice age! Wow! Ah! 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 Go back to the future. At Universal Studios, Florida. It's the greatest mind the universe has been known! On May 2nd, 1991, Back to the Future The Ride officially opened at the park, featuring a combination of 80-foot IMAX dome screens and hydraulic-powered ride vehicles. The motion simulator has guests join Doc Brown through time and space on a 1.21 gigawatt adventure, flying from 2015 Hill Valley through an Ice Age avalanche and into the clutches of a dinosaur, all to stop Biff from altering the future. Unlike opening day, the attraction opened with no problems and was met with positive reception from guests, quickly becoming a fan favorite. The ride helped kick off a blockbuster summer season for Universal Studios Florida, during which the park's attendance numbers beat Disney MGM Studios, a feat many thought was impossible after the terrible grand opening the park had just a year before. Besides Back to the Future, smaller attractions were also added to the park, including the Wild 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 West Stunt Show, taking place in a newly built 2,000-person amphitheater. The live stunt show is inspired by the numerous Western films made by Universal, featuring several cowboy-themed actors surviving death-defying stunts, shootings, and explosions. Besides the stunt show, two new offerings at the park were The Blue Brothers Show, based on a 1980 film, featuring Jake and Elwood performing classic rock and soul songs from the film, and Street Busters, a second live Ghostbusters show that has the boys in gray attempting to catch their biggest foe ever, Beetlejuice. 1991 also also saw the three-night event Fright Nights take place at the park in October, which later evolved into Halloween Horror Nights, one of the world's premier Halloween events still going strong to this day. With the success of Back to the Future The Ride and opening day attractions Confrontation and Earthquake now operating without any problems, Universal wanted to keep the park's momentum going in 1992, adding four more attractions, a themed play area based on an American tale called Fievel's Playland, offering younger guests 
guests a mouse-sized view of the world, featuring oversized movie props. Lucia Tribute, a walk-through museum featuring the best of America's favorite redhead, Lucille Ball. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle Show, a live show featuring many characters from the television series of the same name. And the live musical stage show, Beetlejuice's Graveyard Review, replacing an American Tale theater. The show features Beetlejuice along with Universal Monsters Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein, and the Bride of Frankenstein for a mega monster rock show with pyrotechnics. These new additions help the park's attendance numbers increase by 12% in 1992, from 5.9 million to 6.7, while still lagging behind Walt Disney World overall. Universal Studios Florida had quickly solidified itself as the second most popular theme park destination in Florida in only three years, which was no easy feat. While 1993 would only see the addition of two attractions to the park, one of them being Star Tunes, a live stage show that replaced the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle show with Hanna-Barbera characters. The other was arguably the biggest so far in the park's history, the return of Jaws the Ride. Completely built from the ground up with a price tag of $40 million, this brand new version of the attraction now featured an entirely new ride system, new animatronic sharks, and new explosive exciting scenes. While it did open in August 1993, the attraction was categorized as undergoing technical rehearsals until officially opening in the spring of 1994. 1995 saw the closure of the production studio tour and the opening of the children's live show A Day in the Park with Barney. Based on the popular children's television show Barney and Friends, the show is the only place where kids can meet the purple dinosaur and his friends Baby Bop and BJ in a sing-along, clap-along musical show 365 days a year. While not as popular as Back to the Future wore Jaws, A Day in the Park with Barney was responsible for an increase of families with younger children visiting the park. The first major attraction not based on a universal film would open on April 27, 1996, Terminator 2 3D Battle Across Time, a mini-sequel to James Cameron's 1991 hit sci-fi blockbuster film, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. The $60 million live action show combines live actors, audio animatronics, 3D film footage, and practical effects, blurring the lines of what's real and what's movie magic. The attraction quickly became the new standard of live entertainment at theme parks, revolutionizing the definition of what a live action show should be. With all the focus on the construction of City Walk and Islands of Adventure, 1997 was a quiet year for the park, which only saw Murder, She Wrote Mystery Theater close and be replaced with Hercules and Xena, Wizards of the Screen, a similar experience to the opening day attraction. To help promote the new park, the Islands of Adventure Preview Center opened in New York, giving guests a sneak peek at each island and its attractions. To help draw guests to the park while Islands of Adventure was still under construction, Twister Ride It Out opened on May 4th, 1998, replacing Ghostbusters Spooktacular. The $16 million attraction has guests feel what it's like to be a storm chaser, looking a tornado right in the eye recreated by special effects. Besides the Bill Paxton experience, a new area of the park, Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone, officially opened, consisting of the attractions Curious George Goes to Town, Fievel's Playland, The E.T. Adventure, Animal Actor Stage, and a day in the park with Barney. The area also received a new attraction in 1999, Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster, the first roller coaster in the park. Worried Islands of Adventure would be so popular it would hurt attendance at the park. Men in Black Alien Attack opened on April 14, 2000 to ensure that guests would continue to visit. Based on the 1997 sci-fi film Men in Black, the attraction is the world's first life-size, ride-through interactive video game experience and the only attraction at a universal theme park that offers several different endings all depending on the guests' overall score. In its first 10 years, Universal Studios Florida went from possibly becoming one of the biggest theme park failures ever to establishing itself as a must-visit destination, responsible for the creation of a full-fledged resort, complete with the opening of a second theme park. While Universal added new attractions to draw visitors, the next decade saw the park go through a sweeping change change, one that would affect Universal's approach to its attractions that still felt to this day. What's it say? In the summer of 1999, 
flow of time will be disrupted. The restrictions of gravity will be lifted. There's only one question. The ultimate family vacation this summer. The new Universal Studios Escape. Are you ready? With the opening of Islands of Adventure, City Walk, and an on-site hotel, huge crowds were expected to flock to the brand new Universal Studios Escape Resort. However, due to the resort's name failing to portray exactly what the resort had to offer, not only were attendance numbers for the new park abysmal, only drawing 3.4 million visitors in 1999, less than what Universal Studios Florida drew back in 1990, but the resort recorded a loss of $98 million for the fiscal year. Between the resort's marketing mishap and the September 11 attacks that crippled the tourism industry, attendance at both parks saw a slump, declining by 15% in 2001. In an attempt to draw visitors back to the resort, Universal began a reimagining of the theme park in 2002. Desperate but determined to convince tourists to come back and visit, Universal set out to redefine the park as a place where guests could write the biggest blockbusters of today. Management wanted Universal Studios to become the home of the hottest brands, the most popular stories, and the biggest box office hits. For this to happen, Universal's classic attractions would have to close down for good. The first icon to fall was Confrontation, officially closing on September 8th, 2002. This closure set a new precedent for the park. If Confrontation, once considered the crown jewel of the park, could be closed, then no attraction in the park was safe. The trend of closing attractions continued later into the year and beyond, with the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera on October 20th, Hitchcock The Art of Making Movies on January 3rd, 2003, and The Wild Wild West stunt show later that year on September 1st, 2003. While 2002 was a downer of a year for the park with the closure of two opening day attractions, two brand new ones opened in 2003, Hanna-Barbera's replacement, the motion simulator Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast, which takes guests on a wild chase with their favorite Nicktoons, including Jimmy Neutron, SpongeBob SquarePants, The Fairly Odd Parents, Hey Arnold, and The Rugrats and Alfred Hitchcock's replacement, the 4D simulator ride Shrek 4D, which has the original cast from the film come back for a mini sequel that takes place after Shrek and before Shrek 2. Even with the two new attractions, the park didn't see much of a jump in attendance levels. Hoping Confrontation's replacement would kickstart interest in the park, Revenge of the Mummy, the first indoor roller coaster at the park, officially opened on May 21st, 2004. The roller coaster combines animatronics Electronics, motion picture technology, and a state-of-the-art ride system, considered one of the most ambitious and intense attractions Universal has ever built. The park's 15th anniversary wasn't much of a celebration, as another opening day attraction, Nickelodeon Studios, closed on April 30th, and a brand new show finally opened inside the amphitheater, Fear Factor Live. It seemed that the aggressive approach for the park wasn't working, as attendance saw an 8.5% decrease in 2005 to just 6.1 million. With its parent company, General Electric, making major cuts in spending across the struggling Universal theme parks, there was a lack of any major additions to Universal Studios Florida for three years. During this span, two more opening day attractions closed in 2007, Back to the Future The Ride on March 30th, and Earthquake The Big One on November 5th. 2008 saw the drought of no new attractions at the park come to an end, with Earthquake's replacement, Disaster, a motion picture starring you, a behind-the-scenes look at special effects in movies, open on January 17th, and the motion simulator The Simpsons Ride, which replaced Back to the Future, open on May 15th. While both were technically new rides, guests complained about how similar they were to what they replaced, with little design change made. Unlike the two previous attractions, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket would be a major project for 2009, costing $45 million and opening on August 19th, the first major outdoor roller coaster in the park reaches a height of 
167 feet, a top speed of 65 miles per hour, and allows guests to choose a song from a list that's played during the ride. With the Great Recession in full effect, attendance at the park continued to decline, dropping from 6.2 million in 2008 to 5.5 million in 2009. Universal Studios Florida's second decade is one that saw several fundamental changes made to its lineup of attractions. Moving away from its established franchises and instead focusing on the popular blockbuster films of today. While the park struggled throughout most of the decade, 2010 became a major turning point as not only did a new investor take over, but a certain boy wizard was about to make his theme park debut, changing the industry forever. Opening next door at Islands of Adventure on June 18th, 2010, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter was the driving force for rejuvenating interest in a Universal Orlando resort, helping it report the best financial year in its 20-year history. With the huge influx of visitors and media attention from all over the world, the resort's brand new owner Comcast quickly decided to address the issues plaguing Universal Studios Florida, specifically transforming the park from a half-day to full day experience. Comcast's aggressive renovation plan began with the closure of Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast in 2011 and one of the last remaining opening day attractions, Jaws the Ride in the surrounding Amity area, as well as the demolition of Soundstage 44, former home of Murder, She Wrote, Mystery Theater, and Hercules and Xena Wizards of the Screen in 2012. Replacing Jimmy Neutron was the motion simulator Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, opening in July 20. 2012. Based on the Despicable Me franchise, guests join Gru, his daughters, and the mischievous minions, where they're recruited for Gru's latest scheme, one where they become an actual minion. Built on the former site of Soundstage 44 in just 12 months, the shortest build time ever for a major theme park attraction, Transformers The Ride opened in June 2013. The ride places guests in the middle of an all-out war zone between the Autobots and Decepticons, who join Join Optimus Prime in the fight against Megatron over the fate of Earth in an action-packed adventure. Also opening that summer was the themed area Springfield, home of the characters from The Simpsons. Included within the new area was a new family attraction, Kang and Kodos' Twirl and Hurl, themed food and beverage options from the animated sitcom, photo opportunities, and walk-around characters. The largest expansion in the park's history, The Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley, opened on July 8, 2014. Inspired by the cobblestoned Wizarding Alley and shopping area from the book and movies, Diagon Alley offers plenty of shops and restaurants as well as two attractions. A full-scale replica of the Hogwarts Express which transports guests from Kings Island to Hogsmeade and vice versa, and its flagship attraction, the indoor steel roller coaster Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Just like Hogsmeade did for Islands of Adventure, Diagon Alley led to a massive boost in attendance at Universal Studios Florida, with the park seeing a 17% increase from 7.1 million visitors in 2013 to 8.3 just a year later. The park's 25th anniversary wouldn't see any new attractions open, but the announcement of two new brand new ones, Fast and Furious Supercharged and Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. To bring these so-called attractions to the park, three of the oldest had to close Close, with Disaster Studios shutting down on September 8, 2015, Twister ride it out two months later on November 2nd, and Beetlejuice on January 5th, 2016. Race Through New York opened on April 6th, 2017, and unfortunately Supercharged opened on April 23rd, 2018. After 21 years, Terminator 2 3D Battle Across Time said Hasta La Vista Baby, closing on October 8th, 2017 replaced with the Bourne Stuntacular, a live-action stunt show inspired by the four-decade-old franchise consisting of 15 novels, five films, and a television series, with the closure of T2 3D. As of July 2020, only one opening day attraction from 1990 is still operating, the E.T. Adventure.
Nightmare. While animal actors on location and Universal Horror's makeup show have technically been at the park since opening day, both live shows have closed and been reworked throughout the years. The last decade for Universal Studios Florida has been somewhat of a resurgence for the park, as with the backing of a new parent company and the addition of the Wizarding World has led to a record number of visitors, with 10.7 million coming to the only place you can ride the movies in 2018. While it's moved away from being a film and TV production studio and has removed the older classic attractions, the park has consistently remained true to its original concept, placing guests in the middle of the biggest blockbusters of today. In some way, Universal Studios Florida is a dream come true. After facing setbacks to build the park in the early 1980s, only to have one of the worst grand openings in theme park history in 1990, many were ready to say it's a wrap for the only place where guests just don't watch the movies but live them. However, through a combination of bold risk taking, technical cleverness, and sheer determination, it was able to establish itself as a must visit destination in Orlando. Respond Responsible for the expansion from just a single theme park to a full-blown resort. In the last 30 years, Universal Studios Florida has taken some of the biggest films of all time from the silver screen and has brought them to life in their own thrilling, terrifying, adventurous, exciting, and heartwarming experiences, turning the illusion into reality. While it has gone through a lot of changes throughout the years, there has always been one constant when it comes to the park. It's the only place to see the stars and ride the movies. A special shout out to all the theme park fanatics on my Patreon in the description down below. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Until next time on Theme Park Destination, let's go and ride the movies.